Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. So in this lesson, we're moving on to something slightly different now. We're going to be stretching the graphs, okay? But when I say stretch, it could also mean compress. So in the previous videos, we've been looking at questions where you have graphs, for example, a sin graph that then gets moved upwards. So for example, this point moves over here, and this point moves up, and this point moves up. And so all of the points were moved up, and so the graph did that. But what we're going to start looking at now is what happens when we compress or stretch a graph. So for example, if we take this original graph that we see here, and we, we enlarge it by stretching it like that, for example, or we could compress it so it would look something like this. See, so in the space of... Um, the white graph doing one cycle, the blue one has done two. So that's what we're going to look at in this when the ne this lesson and the next couple of lessons. So as always, you're just going to do this on the calculator. And so let's get started. So we're going to bring out the calculator. And then just always remember to put it into table mode. You then type in the equation. Remember your start must always be the start that they've given you, which is minus 180. The ending point is what they've given us in this question, which is 360. Now the step is very important. So we know that the step of a normal sin graph, or sorry, the period of a normal sin graph under usual conditions is 360. But now, this 2x over here, we need to know what that does to the graph. So x's are... They complicated, okay? You can even think about it in if you wanted to. Uh, it just came to mind now. Uh, having ex girlfriends, having ex boyfriends, it's complicated. If you have a graph that is, for example, the sin of x minus 30, that actually causes the graph to go 30 degrees to the right, not to the left as we would expect. If we have a graph that is now the sin of 2x, well, logically, the, every person would expect that that doubles the graph but that's not true because remember x's are complicated and so 2x is actually going to cause the graph to half and so instead of having so if your original graph looks like that the 2x graph is now going to be completely half of that okay so every point is going to half so if your period of a normal sin graph is 360 well this new graph is going to be completing in 180 degrees so here's a little rule that you can remember you can re remember that the period is always going to be equal to 360 for a sin and cos graph divided by whatever number is in front of the x and so in this case it's a 2 and so our new period is going to be 180 why do I need to know that? Because when you're choosing the step on your calculator, well, we know that step is always 180 over 4. That'll always be the scenario. And so the step on this graph is going to be 45 degrees. If you kept it at 90, you're going to struggle on the calculator because you're going to have two little values and your graph's just not going to have the shape that it's supposed to have. So let's go ahead. We'll make our step equal to 45. And there we have our values. Okay, so I'm going to tabulate those values quickly and then we'll draw the graph. And so there we have our table with all our values and now we can draw our graph. I'm going to now plot all the points. And so there we have it. So quite an interesting graph. So what I want to show you quickly is a normal sin graph. I'm just going to draw it between 0 and 360. And so there we can see that that pink graph has completed one cycle between 360 degrees, whereas the green graph has completed, so up till, up till um, this point over here is one cycle, and up to there is another cycle. So it completes two cycles in 360 degrees. And so always remember that x's are complicated, and so when you say 2x, it actually has the effect of halving. Okay, so every single coordinate halved. Okay, so if question B, it says, what does the 2x do to the graph? It halves the graph, or it compresses it in the horizontal direction. Then it says, determine the amplitude. So amplitude is always the maximum distance from your resting position. And so the resting position is this equilibrium line over here, the, the x-axis. And so that maximum distance, well, that's 1. So your amplitude is 1. The range, well, that's your y values. And so we see the lowest value is minus 1, and the highest value is 1. And so we can say that y is an element going between minus 1 and 1. The domain, well, domain is the x values, and that's what they gave us. So that's from minus 180 up to 360. 
as with the tan graph or with the tan graph we would have had to have excluded the asymptotes but in this one there are no asymptotes and then the period now here's where things are a little bit interesting we know that a normal period is 360 for a sin and cos but when you have a sin 2x well you've halved everything and so this graph would now compete not compete complete every 180 degrees and we can see that it completes one cycle between here so this point here and this point here that is one cycle and look how long it took 180 degrees thank you for watching